Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Chopping It Up with Rob Mel. No notes, straight from the throat. Well, let's get started. Game three is in the books. If y'all recall last week, I told you I thought that Golden State would wrap it up in five. And uh, I said yesterday that I thought that Golden State would sweep it simply because I thought that Teron Lou would not change his game plan by not sitting down J.R. Smith. Well, last night has been the best game of the series. It was a fun game to watch. In fact, as it was going down to the final minutes, uh, there was a shot that J.R. Smith made, and I said that Cleveland was going to win this game. I didn't think Golden State would come back to win this game. In fact, to go on an 11-0 run at that point was just phenomenal. Listen, this wasn't about J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith showed up. He came to play. He had a... Uh, five three-pointers and he hit a free throw he hit some big shots this wasn't about J.R. Smith he may not have been the smartest guy on defense but he, he he hit some big shots guys we can talk about the firepower that Golden State possess and they do they have a lot of talent over there at any given time there's always two all-stars on the court again I'll say it again. You got four All-Stars, and you got a Finals MVP coming off the bench. And you have a Sean Livingston that once upon a time was, was highly regarded as possibly the next great one. This series has come down to one person, one person only. And that's Lou. I think Tyron Lou has done a poor job in coaching this Cleveland team throughout this playoff series. And, and it stems from just the fact that he doesn't provide any rest for LeBron and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving and LeBron was sensational last night. I cannot say enough about the play of Kyrie Irving. I don't know if that's just great offense, luck, or whatever, but at the end of the day, he is getting it done, and it's very respectable, very fun to watch, and it's quite incredible. His ability to use the backboard and put English on the on the ball to get it to drop in the hoop is, is spectacular. Uh, I haven't seen better finishes under the rim than what Kyrie Irving do on a consistent basis from anyone, for that matter. Listen. Jordan was a great finisher above the rim and under the rim. But Kyrie Irving is spectacular. And don't get me wrong, Curry is not too far from behind him. But you're not going to beat this team with your two best players. I don't care how much they score or how much they produce. But if they're playing 46 minutes, you're not going to beat this team. You got to understand. The 12 dribble that Kyrie Irving takes to get to the basket is wear and tear on him. The moves that LeBron t goes to the basket, whether he creates the foul or not, he's always going to have contact. That takes wear and tear on him. But in the meantime, because Kerr trusts his, t his, his, uh, his offense, I mean his uh, team, he plays all 12 guys. Everybody gets in there, whether it's from two minutes to, to 40 minutes. But what it does is it prevents someone from playing 45 minutes. It prevents them from maybe being fatigued. It, 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 it keeps them to be a little bit more fresher than the opposing team. And it showed down the stretch of that game where Cleveland ran out of gas. And it looks like these guys are just getting started. What a game it was. LeBron was sensational. Kyrie Irving, again, I don't have words to express. Kyle Korver came off the bench for 24 minutes. Uh, he hit two big threes. He missed a crucial one in the corner. Uh, I thought that LeBron should have went right and gone to the basket. How often does LeBron go right? He goes left. By going left, he went into the teeth of the defense. That forced him to kick it out to a wide open Korver, who should have knocked it down. But I think at this point here, you needed LeBron to go right and lay it up. Again, I put this on Tyrone Lue. Uh, last year, 
Had they lost, he would have got a pass. The fact that they won, he gets a lot of accolades. But at the end of the day, he had a whole year to figure this out. Again, this one is on him. You have to find rest for LeBron and Kyrie Irving. You cannot have them tugging on their shorts going into the fourth quarter against this team. You know, you got to understand this as well. And and uh, with all the offense that they spent, with all the energy they spent on offense, Kyrie and LeBron, they spent just as much on defense. I mean, Kyrie Irving is taking the challenge of Garden Curry, who had 26 last night and 13 rebounds to lead all uh, players in rebound. Matter of fact, him and Kevin Love was tied. He's chasing around Curry, fighting off pigs. Curry giving him dribble exp- exhibitions. I mean, he is really doing it. And he's doing it on the offensive end as well. That's got to be taxing on your body. And whether he's checking Curry or he's chasing Clay around, that's got to be tiresome. And for LeBron James, he's running around there. I, I didn't see him play. Kevin Durant the whole game but for the most part he's dealing with Kevin Durant or either Draymond Green that's not easy for a guy who is asked to play 46 minutes and the way he plays on offense Ty Lu, you have to trust your bench and I mean Shannon Fry has to get five minutes you know I'm sitting there watching the game with my wife and McGaw I, maybe I'm saying his wrong, his name wrong. McGaw, the rookie for Golden State. And my wife is like, who's this guy? Where did he come from? I said, well, you know, Kerr, he plays his whole team. You know, it, it ain't all about production. It's just about making sure that his guys are rested. She said, oh, okay. And then after the game, she tells me, yeah, you know, that makes a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. You play a guy. You don't necessarily need him from production. But you want to give somebody a breather. You can't just sit somebody out for the last 45 seconds of a quarter and expect them to be fresh down the stretch. Derek Williams should get playing time. I don't care how much it is. Five minutes. Six minutes. Three minutes this quarter. Three minutes that quarter. That could make a difference on LeBron being rested and well for the, for the end of the game. This is on Lou. This is not on the players. This is on Lou. Again, great game by LeBron. He had 39 points. He had uh, 11 rebounds, 9 assists. Kyrie Irving, sensational, 38 points. Kevin Love, his scoring fell off. He had 9 points, 13 rebounds, 6 steals. Curry, he had 26, 13 rebounds. I believe it was seven assists. Clay Thompson, 30 points. He's alive. Kevin Durant, 31. And, and, and let me tell you about their big three. They they mesh so well. It was like in the first quarter to the mid second quarter, it was all Thompson. You know, second quarter, third quarter. Seemed like it was Curry. Fourth quarter, it's Durant. Meanwhile, they all getting it in throughout the whole game. But it's and, and Draymond Green, he's racking up the assists. He's just loving it. Eight points, eight rebounds, seven assists. He's just loving it. The bench comes up. Uh, you get seven points from David West. You get uh, uh, six points from from Sean Livingston. You get eight points, seven to eight points from Igladala. I mean, it's just contributions all over the place. This one's a sweep. And it's on Ty Lu. Yeah, Lou. It is on Ty Lu. Mismanaging the minutes. And you can blame a little bit on Tristan Thompson because of the Kardashian curse. Where is this guy? But you know what? I'm going to cut him some slack. 
it's a difficult matchup for him when he has to guard Draymond Green. It, it, it really is. And with them going to Green at the, at the five spot, it takes him out of position for rebounding. It, it, it causes him to chase upon the three-point line. He don't have that ability. He has to shine when McGee is in the game. He has to shine when Pachula is in the game. He cannot be outplayed by those guys. You know, McGee, a lot of his stuff that he does in the game doesn't show up in the box score. But I tell you what, you know his eight minutes when he's out there. And, and again, he, I think he had one point last night. But he, he had a couple of uh, loose balls that he got to. It just makes his presence felt out there. But more importantly, he allows maybe Draymond Green to get some rest. Maybe he allows Kevin Durant to get some rest. Something that Shannon Fry could do for them, and I think Shannon Fry would be able to produce slightly better than McGee. Because the truth be told, McGee can't guard anybody other than Tristan Thompson. He would be he would have a hard time or a difficult time chasing Shannon Fry up at the three point line. Lou is coaching like a rookie. Not someone who's come in here with the title defending championship head coach. He's coaching like a rookie. I don't want to take nothing away from Golden State. They played sensational. Steve Kerr, uh, he knows his team well. He just he draws it up. They execute. Sometimes it looks like he just sits back and let them play. And, and to tell you the truth, I think that's more of it than anything else because it doesn't matter who coaches them. The outcome is still the same. So where do we go from here? We'll talk about it uh, tomorrow. But uh, I know they made history last year being the only team to come back from a 3-1 deficit. But don't look for history to repeat itself this time around. I do not see them coming back from a 3-zip deficit. This one is clearly in the books. It's clearly in the books. Unless the commissioner says we need ratings, we need revenue, I need this to go to seven. Otherwise, I don't see it happening. I really don't. I don't see it happening. I'll give my prediction tomorrow. But this is not about film session for the Cleveland Cavs. This is about putting guys in there so that your guys are rested towards the end of the game. Because fatigue has played a major part in this game for the likes of LeBron. And I will say it for the last time before I close. In February, when LeBron was screaming, we need a playmaker. We need someone else in here. I think he was referring to D-Wade. And I think D-Wade would have been had. D-Wade has a 23 million player option that he's likely to kick in to stay with the Chicago Bulls. Because no one on the open market is going to give him $23 million a year. I think if they had approached Cleveland, I mean Chicago, with a package of Shannon Fry, who's not playing, by the way, and Iman Shumpert for D-Wade, I think Chicago would have jumped on that. That's the playmaker that LeBron was referring to. Not Darren Williams, who is a shell of himself, who cannot get out of his way, who just looks horrible. Looks like he should have his jersey taken off. D-Wade would have been the answer. It's a little too late in the offseason to go get D-Wade. But D-Wade would have been the answer. Not Darren Williams. This is Chopping It Up with Rob Mal. No notes. Straight from the throat. Y'all be good. I see y'all in 24 hours.
Peace.